Welcome to AP Chemistry at Hananiga High School. And today we'll be looking at equilibrium problems using the ice technique, an ice table, which we're going to call ice box, because we're making a box and there's something related to ice here. So a memory aid that we'll talk about from time to time is equilibrium problems will often, often be using the ice box. Now, when you go to set up an ice box, first you're going to fill in the initial amounts in molarity, moles per liter. That's where the I in ice comes from. So the very first part of our ice box, the first line is initial amounts of all of our substances. Use stoichiometry to determine how much each changes in terms of X. That's the C. So our second line is going to be our change in concentration. And we're going to use this in value of uh, terms of X because we usually don't know what the X is. Now if products will be formed to get to equilibrium, because we've got all reactants, uh, then that means that the reactants are going to be going down by some multiple of x, and the products will be going up by some multiple of x. And that's usually the case in most problems, because usually we're introducing a gas into a closed system, and there is no product at the very beginning. So in typical situations, your reactants will be going down by x, and your products will be going up by x. Now, the actual value of x is really driven by the stoichiometry. So you have to look at coefficients. Now, if reactants are formed from the product, so let's say we had... Uh, products and we weren't at equilibrium and we have to basically make more reactants to get to equilibrium, then the sign is going to be reversed. We would be dropping our product concentration and increasing our reactant concentration. And for problems that we're going to be looking at today, it's going to be a little bit simpler. One of the things we'll end up looking at in the next set of notes is what's called a Q value. And you can use Q to establish, are we left of equilibrium or right of equilibrium? Are we going to shift towards, towards making products or are we going to shift towards making reactants? That's something we'll look at tomorrow and then we'll come back and add those ideas into our ice box. Third thing you do is determine the equilibrium concentration. So our third row in the ice box or ice table would be E and that stands for the equilibrium concentrations. Now remember things are going to be going up or down in terms of X so we're really adding the first two to get the third. So you add I and C to get your E. Now step four is you're going to use the equilibrium expression to solve for X. If we don't know it and don't have enough clues to figure it out, we're going to have to use our solution of K to figure it out. Now to simplify the math, some X values may be assumed to be zero um, because sometimes we have situations where it, it's such a uh, small difference that's going to make, we assume it's zero. And we'll, we'll be getting into that more in the next few chapters. The other thing you have to watch out through uh, here because of the algebra is sometimes we can end up with quadratic equation type situations. So one thing I'd strongly recommend you get for your graphing calculator that we've been using a little bit more in the last few chapters is download and install a quadratic, a simple quadratic solver. So if you ever pop into one of these where you've got to use the quadratic equation rather than plug into the actual equation, you can just plug in your three values for A, B, and C, and it'll return what the appropriate um, values for X would be. And at that point, if we got the quadratic, we have to evaluate what, what do those two numbers mean and are either of them things that make sense. So we're going to always end up with one value of X. Even where you're using the quadratic, we have two choices. You'll see one just can't be possible. Now, if you need help with the whole icebox idea, um, there is a website, uh, at purdue.edu that does a nice job of taking you through concepts related to Icebox. So you can check out that website if you need a little bit more help with the concepts related to Icebox. Now, one thing I need to mention here at the very beginning, in order to do this, we use our stoichiometry in step two to determine how much things are going up and down. So the very first thing you need to do is write your reaction, write your balanced reaction. And that's why some people refer to these as rice tables. They include an R in the ice, and that stands for you got to start with the reaction at the beginning. Now, here's a typical ice box situation, a relatively simple one. If you mix two molar A and three molar B, how, much, or how would the ice situation look? So how would we set up ice box for that? Now keep in mind, we're mixing A and B, so at the beginning, times zero, while we do have two molar A, and it says we have three molar B, we don't have any product. So that's going to be zero, and you'll see a lot of that in problems. Not always. The more complex problems, you sometimes have things. But a lot of times, you're going to start with total reactants. Now, over time, those concentrations are going to change. And since we have all reactants and no products, our equilibrium is going to be shifting to the right as we make products and lose our reactants. So we know that our change for our reactants is going to be a negative x. By stoichiometry, we have 1A2 plus 1B2 makes 2ABs. So A2 
is going to go down by x. B2 will go down by the exact same amount, one-to-one -one stoichiometry. It'll go down by x. But on the product side, notice there is a coefficient of 2 in front of our AB. So that means while the reactants are disappearing at a rate of x, the products are going to be appearing at a rate twice of that. So that's going to be plus 2x. And then finally, our E in our ice box table, well, you just add I, uh, I and C together. So at equilibrium, we would have 2 molar minus whatever our change in concentration was for A. And for our concentration of B to at equilibrium, we'd have 3 molar minus X. And 0 plus 2X, our concentration equilibrium of AB would be 2X. Now, that is a typical setup for an ice box problem. Now, before we jump on, I wanted to look at one last thing here real quick. Now, how we go about solving these x? Well, in this particular case, we don't have enough information to do that. But remember, we can set up our KC expression. Since we're dealing with concentrations here, we're going to be doing KC, capital K, subscript C. And you can see from our uh, setup here that product is AB. Remember, the coefficient is 2, so it would be AB squared over our reactants which would be A2 and B2. So this would be an, uh, the, the KC expression for this particular reaction. Now, if we knew any of our values here, um, we could plug them in and solve for KC. Well, if we're given KC and we know that this would go there and that this would go there, and this would go there. If we're given our value of Kc, we have an equation with one unknown. Now, if you manipulate the equation, so your algebra has got to come in here, you got to take 2x and square it, so you're going to get 4x squared on top, and on the bottom you're going to have 2 minus x times a quantity of 3 minus x, so you'd have to distribute that out, and that would be the value of Kc, which is whatever happened to be. So let's say the problem uh, said the Kc was you know, 6.2 times 10 to the 6th. So you could actually distribute the x out and end up solving for x. Now this one ends up a fairly complex type situation, but most of them are going to be significantly easier for that. So that's kind of where you would go next with this. If you don't know what the value of x is, um, because if you did know the value of x, you could plug them in for each of these spots, solve your equilibrium concentrations, plug in and solve for Kc. That's one thing you'll typically do here at the beginning. But if they give you the value of K, if they give you the equilibrium expression, you're going to be doing what I did down here at the bottom. You're going to be substituting in your values. And that's where it's really, 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 really handy if we have a situation where that minus x isn't changing very much, so we can assume it's zero, it'll end up really simplifying our math. And we'll see some of those in the upcoming chapters. Now, here's an equilibrium problem. In a closed system, 1.000 times 10 to the negative third molar H2 and 2.000 times 10 to the negative three molar I2 at 448 degrees Celsius is added to a container and allowed to reach equilibrium. Analysis, one thing that tells me right away, I don't have any product at the beginning. Analysis of the equilibrium mixture shows that the concentration of HI is 1.87 times 10 to the negative third molar. Remember, that's going to be your product here. And that would be at equilibrium. So I started out with no product at equilibrium. I know I'm going to have that much. And that is going to really simplify things. When they tell you you've got your, this equilibrium concentration, that's going to make it the easiest type of problem yet. Now it asks to calculate Kc at 448 degrees Celsius for the reaction taking place. Well, the reaction would be H2 plus I2, a simple synthesis reaction to, to, to uh, make 2HI. Now your first thing you're going to do here is take your information and plug it into a rice table. Now I always like to write the reaction up top because remember we're going to use the stoichiometry to calculate our C's. Now if you plug in the information given from the problem, we knew the initial concentration of H2, I2, and HI because HI was zero. And they told us the equilibrium concentration of HI, which is going to be huge here. You'll see as we go through. Now your first thing you need to do is evaluate your C. Well since I had all reactants, I know they're going to be going down based upon their stoichiometry. Since they're one to one, they're each going to go down by on the product side, by stoichiometry, HI is going to go up by twice that, 2x. And the next thing you'd do is find out what your equilibrium situations are. Well, that's just adding the three things together. Now, if you take a look at what's happening 
in this last box. Remember, they gave us our equilibrium concentration of HI was 1.87 times 10 to the negative third. Well, that basically means that it's changing 1.87 times 10 to the negative third, which means this equals that. And that allows us to quickly and easily calculate x. So before I do anything else here and write equations with x's, I know that 2x is going to equal 1.87 1, 1 times 10 to the negative third. Well, 0 plus 2x then has to equal that. Solve for 2x, or solve for x, you get 9.35 times 10 to the negative fourth. That means I know those have to be negative 9.5 times, or 9.35 times 10 to the negative fourths. And now it's going to make it very easy for me to figure out what my H2 and I2 concentrations were at equilibrium. You simply subtract, or actually I should say you add them together. I plus C is going to equal our E here. And that's going to end up giving us 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's going to give us 1.065 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now at this point, I have all of my equilibrium concentrations. My ice table helped me figure things out and set those things up. Now the actual question, remember, was to calculate the equilibrium constant K. So if we take a look at our reaction, remember it was 1 to 1 to 2, products being HI, so it would be HI squared over the concentration of H2 times I2. And in our ice box, we just figured out what our equilibrium concentrations were for all those things, plug them into your calculations, round to two sig figs, and you end up with a K value of 51. Now, since this is the first time we've actually calculated a K here, notice something. K has no units. Celebrate it, because in the next few chapters, there are many, many, many situations where you end up getting to forget about writing units, because K doesn't have any units that we care about. Uh, so whenever you do this calculation, you really don't need to worry about the units of K. Now, we still have to worry about our concentration units and so forth, but K does not have any units that we worry about. So it's just 51 would be our answer here. Problem number two. So here's a look at another equilibrium situation. A 1.00 liter flask is filled with 1.000 moles of H2 and 2.00 moles of I2 at 448 degrees Celsius. The value of Kc at 448 degrees Celsius is 50.5. Sound familiar? What are the equilibrium concentrations of H2I2 and HI in moles per liter? So it's asking the concentration. Notice it gave us moles here. And because of that, they had to give us the volume of the flask. So you're putting one mole in a one liter flask and two moles in a one liter flask. Simple math to get two molarity moles per liter. So you need to recognize what our units are being given as. In this case, they were given as moles. The reason that's important is if it was a two liter flask, you wouldn't put one and two in the icebox table. You would actually, once you calculate the molarity, it would be 0.5 and 1. Okay, next we set up our icebox table. First would be initial concentrations, since like I said, it was 1.00 moles in one liter. That's 1.00 molar, or 1.000 molar H2, and 2.000 molar I2. Since we induced these into the flask, that meant we had no HI at the beginning, so that's our nice round zero like we usually see here at the beginning. Next, we have to evaluate what's going to happen. Well, like we've been looking at in the last few problems, because this really is the same reaction, our reactants are going to go down by x, and our product is going to go up by 2x. But in this particular case, they did not give us any equilibrium concentrations. So when I add I and C together to get our equilibrium concentrations, we're going to end up with some math here. So we've got 1.000 minus x for our H2 concentration at equilibrium. I2 is 2.000 minus x, and HI is 2x. Well. I can write my KC expression like we did before. It's going to look exactly like it did in the last problem. And instead of having actual numbers here, I've got things with variables in it I'm going to plug in. So if I put 2x up top and 1 minus x and 2 minus x on the bottom, and I go through and distribute, and this is where your middle school algebra comes in, also something you did in Algebra 1 from time to time, you can end up with this particular equation. It should look, when I convert it to this form, so everything on the left, leaving zero on the right. This is what type of problem? Think about it. When have you seen this before in math class? You're right, quadratic equation. That's why I said one thing that might be useful 
in this chapter. Now, you're not going to see it often, but you will need to handle it because in real life you sometimes need to handle it. You will need to periodically calculate using the quadratic equation. Sometimes we can simplify and get around it. In this particular case, we couldn't. And that's where having that quadratic solver in your graphing calculator can become really useful. So if I actually go and solve by the quadratic equation, I'm going to skip to the end here. So by whatever form you want to do it, a nice simple math, uh, program in your graphing calculator or do the actual quadratic, you end up that x is going to be equal to two values here, 2.32 or 0.935. Now since we can't have two values for x, one of these won't make any sense we, when we take a look at what's happening on our ice table. So let's take a look at once now let's take a look at what our two values of x would give us here. Now since the initial concentration of H2 was 1.00 and it was going down by X. If X was 2.32, that's going to give us a negative equilibrium concentration. And that makes absolutely no sense. So what we're going to do is get rid of 2.2 or 3.2 as a possible value for X because it doesn't make any sense based on the data. So that must mean X must equal 0.935. Now, if you plug 0.93 in for x at our various equilibrium concentrations, you'd see that the H2 at equilibrium would be 0 0.065 molar. I2 at equilibrium would end up 1.065. And HI at equilibrium would be 1.87. So this is an example of a use of icebox. So when they give you a k, you're going to end up with x's that you have to solve and evaluate. So that ends our part two of our notes on equilibrium over section 15.5.